Hey there, this is Nick with a super valuable QuickBooks Online tutorial for real estate investors and your bookkeepers. And we're going to talk about how we can take transactions that span multiple properties, multiple projects, and split them up without killing ourselves with a really tedious process, right? When it comes to accounting, and specifically for real estate accounting, we need to think about our process and ensuring that we're not creating something that's too tedious too complex, it's difficult for ourselves or our bookkeepers to follow. We need something that's really sustainable so that we can focus on making deals. So I'm gonna take an example here where we have a loan that spans multiple properties. This is a very common situation. We have maybe an umbrella or a portfolio loan that spans multiple properties. And we wanna be able to track the interest and the principal by property, right? That's something that would be useful to us. This is the example I'm gonna to use today. But what I'm talking about is very useful for any other general expenses that span multiple properties being able to track them in a sustainable way and then split them at year's end with a magical, magical and super easy journal entry. So let's get into it. I have this property here. I'm gonna be going way back in time on my balance sheet to demonstrate this. I've got a building that I purchased for $400,000, actually two buildings that I purchased for a total of $200,000. If I go, uh, $400,000, if I look at my balance sheet by class here, I've got property A1 and property A2, okay? Um, these two properties, it's kind of like one deal, it's called a deal is A, and then I've got property one, property two. Uh, property one's worth 250,000, property two's worth 150,000. I got a loan for those as well, and then over time, I'm paying back that loan. So what I'm gonna demonstrate for you is how we track the payments on that loan uh, and we do that and we split it by property. So this is what I'm showing you now is the initial journal entry, right? So I've got my building, 250,000, 150,000. And then when I bought, I split the loan proportionately, which makes complete sense. And this is the easy part, right? We've got that single loan that we're splitting between properties one and two. Okay, we're doing the same proportions as what I bought it for. Okay, that part is easy. What becomes difficult and really tedious is tracking all of those payments, okay? So as I make payments, and over on my right-hand side here, I have an amortization schedule, $400,000 loan, 6% interest. Okay, my minimum monthly payment is $3,375.43, and that's split between principal and interest, right? So when we are tracking those transactions out of our bank account, we would like to split between interest and principal, okay? But we'd also like to split between our properties. So if we dig into these transactions, what I've done is I've done it, what I would say is kind of the wrong way. I guess wrong is the wrong term. It is correct, but it's way tedious. I've got 12 monthly payments here. Seems simple enough on the surface, but if I get down into each one of these, basically I've taken my principal and my interest and I've split it between properties A and property B, right? On my spreadsheet, I'm able to look at my interest and my principal. I can take that 62.5% is my proportion. Remember the one, you know, one uh, was worth 250,000, the other was worth 150,000, so that's 62.5%. So I could split it up, right? And I'm showing you this because this is, in my opinion, the not smart way to do this, okay? And there's nothing inaccurate about it, but basically I take that $2,000 in interest and I split it proportionately among the properties one and two. I do the same thing with principal. This is valuable because it gives me at any given point in time, I can see the value of each loan and also how much I've paid in interest for each loan, right? That is valuable to do. However, what I'm gonna show you is a better way to make this not so tedious. Basically, the problem with this process is that every single month, when this $3,300 transaction comes through, I or somebody on my team must go in and make this split. Even if I'm making use of recurring transactions and I'm making use of rules to help with this, I still, or somebody has to go in here and do this math and plot out all four of these lines. Now this is only two properties, right? Think about how much more complex it gets if one, I have got three, four, or five properties, or two, what if there's other parts of this loan payment? Think about escrow, think about uh, private mortgage insurance as well, right? So this is as simple as it could potentially get, right? What I'm gonna show you, is how we don't need to differentiate all of this detail within each monthly transaction. Here's 8-1, by the way. So 8-1, we go across, you know, here's my 534-11, 890-18. You know, we're doing all that. It takes a long time. This is like one deal, too. We hopefully have more than one deal. We got five, six, seven, right? 
So this is a correct way to do it, but it's a very tedious way to do it, and in my opinion, not sustainable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward to 2014 and show you how I would recommend doing this, okay? So what I've got here is all my transactions coming out, and, and again, by the way, this isn't inaccurate, right? So if we look at my, uh, you know, my balance sheet as of, the, as of 2013, does it show that that loan A has the balance? Yes, it does. Great. Okay. And it does show if I get into my net income and I want to see my net income by uh, class, I would be able to see how much I spent on interest by property. Okay. I got the 14, 7, 11, 54, and then the 8,826, 92. So it's accurate. That's good. But we can get there a different way. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the spending on that uh on this account here this checking account just so we can see all the transactions laid out and the, the transactions on the surface the amounts have to be accurate because we're going to match with our bank feed so that all looks good i'm going to fast forward to 2014 and show you what i did in 2014 instead okay and this is in my opinion the smart way to do this so i'm going to pick on 1 1 2014 and it's at this point that we make a change. So instead of having four lines for this transaction, I'm going to keep it very simple. And I'm gonna have two lines. I'm gonna have one for principal, one for interest. And I'm gonna track it all toward a general property A, or you know, it's kind of deal A, I guess we'd be calling it, right? And I'm gonna make it general. Now, is this 100% accurate? Not really, but this transactional, here I am in January, I'm gonna do the same thing for February, March, April, May. At the end of the year, I'm gonna show you how we can use one single journal entry to really simplify this whole thing, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> that's my transaction for uh, January. Now, check this out. Uh, when I go to February, it gets even better in that I don't even change February, okay? So, February is exactly identical to January, all right? Now, is this 100% accurate? No, but what it does is it allows my bank to continue to be reconciled, this 3375, and generally speaking, things are going to the right place. My principal and interest is kind of close. It's gonna be off by a few bucks. We're gonna fix it at the end of the year. You have to think about whether that's okay for you, if you need your monthly transactions to be 100% accurate, or if we can use some journal entries at the end of the year. This second step here, I think is really valuable. Surely you could go into every single month and change these, but I'm going to show you why you don't really need to do that. Basically what we then have is this, a bunch of these transactions, these are all the same. One, one through 12, one are all the same, meaning we can use a recurring transaction. We have the system automatically create those. We can also use a rule in the bank feed, have it automatically happen. The important thing is getting handled, meaning the 3375, 43 coming from my bank account, that is accurate. The principal and interest allocation I'm going to fix with a journal entry. So let me show you how we do that. If I go to my custom reports, I'm gonna to go to balance sheet as of 2014. Okay, here is my loan A at the end of 2014. And if I kinda of just look here, it is not accurate, you know? That's, and that's to be assumed because the 365,020, 365,510, it's not 100% accurate. And that makes sense because I've been tracking everything um, a little bit more generically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna display by classes here, all right? Basically, what I would like to do is what I need to do is I need to correct all of this, right? So I need to back out both the uh, loan payments and the interest, and then I need to populate what they should be. And that's actually really quite simple to do, okay? So I'm just gonna make a note here of what I have. I've got, for my principal, I've got a negative 17,523.12, okay? And then for my interest, I've got a negative 22,982.04, okay? And that's a total of 40,505.16, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one single journal entry where I'm gonna correct all of this at the end of the year. So it's gonna be 12-31-2014. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get everything out of general. So anything that's to that property A, I wanna get rid of it. So I'm gonna pull on the loan A, as well as my interest, okay? And uh, I am going to credit both of these to bring them back to zero, and I'm gonna do that to my general. 
Okay, so property A general, property A general, I'm gonna bring these back to zero. So I'm going to credit both of them. So here I have the loan A is 17,523.12, and then the interest that I paid is 22,982.04, okay? I'm taking that out, and then all I'm going to do is I'm gonna tell the story and say like, well, I did pay principal on loan A, Okay, I did pay interest on loan A, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of general and put it into each of my specific properties, okay? So instead of general, I'm gonna go up to A1 principal, A2 principal, A1 interest, A2 interest, okay? So I'm gonna take th these amounts and split these up. How do I figure that out? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at how much uh, principal and interest I paid to each of these properties. If I look at my principal here, property one, I've got 11,528.21 and I've got 6,754.93, okay? Now notice the total here is 18,000, it's more than here. That makes sense, right? Because I wasn't changing my principal and interest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do loan A, when it, as it pertains to property one, I'm gonna do 11,000, 258.21, I'm gonna debit that, and then I'm gonna debit 6754.93 for property two. Now, by the way, the cents are, might, might be a little bit off on this, we're gonna check that in a second. Okay, now I'm gonna do my interest. I've got 14,057.49, and then I've got 8,434.50. All right, and I am off by a few cents. That makes complete sense. <laughs> like that, that wouldn't uh, surprise me much. I think what's important is that our principal is on, right? So this 11,528.21, this 67.54.93, and it looks like I'm off by three cents here. So I'm gonna add three cents to my interest. Those cents will not matter in the long term, okay? We do probably want our, our principal to be the same. So what I'm doing again is I'm backing out the general and I'm putting it toward a specific property. I'm gonna save and close this and see how it impacts my balance sheet. Same balance sheet, I hope we get a refresh here. Are we going to? Yes, okay, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, actually my math was, was off a little bit. Three cents went the other direction, but look at what we have here. I have loan A balance, I've got loan B balance, here's my total, 365.02016, again, that three cents I need to find, then my net income for each of these as well. We see how much we spent in interest by property, and we have that matching nicely. All right, 14,057, 8,434.50. All right, that's how we can save ourselves a ton of time. These transactions that are really complex and have multiple lines that we need to split, you're gonna drive yourself absolutely crazy if you're trying to split by property, especially if you're trying to do by unit. I don't recommend splitting transactions by unit, but if you are, you need to use a strategy like this. Do it all to general, and then at the end of the year, use a journal entry to move things from a general to specific, all right? This is one example. I'd like to know what else, what other situations you have that I can demonstrate for you, what other comments, questions you have on this, because this is really serious. We cannot have solid books if we overcomplicate it, all right? And I'm a big proponent of that. We need to make it simple, get the transactions in. The day-to-day, month-to-month needs to be simple and sustainable. We can use journal entries at year end to make those little tweaks. Let me know what else you have here. I'm ready for more and more videos on QuickBooks Online for real estate investors and their bookkeepers. Check out my course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. Camp 4.0 just came out as well. I'll see you on the next video.